I was on the Manassas battlefield with my father when I was younger. We were sitting on the back of his tailgate, eating McDonald's on top of a hill, looking at some cannons. It was a foggy and misty day with a slight chill. I think it was November. All of a sudden, we saw a man dressed in full Civil War attire, waving at us from about 50 to 100 meters away, standing by the cannons. My dad had a pair of binoculars with him, and we got a closer look at the man. He appeared to be in a Confederate uniform and was standing stationary, only moving his arm to wave. It was a come-here wave. Thinking there might be a reenactment going on and that the man needed help, my dad walked down to the man while I watched with the binoculars. When my dad got close to the man, he stopped walking and assumed a confused posture. After a couple of seconds standing next to the man, he turned around and sprinted back to me. He proceeded to throw everything in the back of the truck, and we left the battlefield in a hurry. My dad said that as he walked down there, the man slowly disappeared, and he got the strangest feeling in his stomach and severe chills. To this day, my dad gets chills and goosebumps telling the story. My dad, having seen combat in Vietnam, is not an easy guy to scare. From my perspective, my dad was right next to the guy, and he never disappeared. We don't know what we saw, but I think it was a ghost. My family and I were in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania when I was around eight years old. We had just arrived that day, but my dad wanted to check out and get pictures of this memorial called the Eternal Light Peace Memorial before the park closed, as the sun was just about to set. My mother, brother and I all stayed in the car because we were cranky and very hungry. However, my dad got out to look at the statues and cannons for a few minutes. All of a sudden, my mom and I saw two figures appear on the edge of the field out of the woods, on the opposite side where we were parked. They were all tan, I mean head to toe, there was no other color of hair, skin, eyes at all, and one was pointing in the general direction of the memorial. They went back into the woods and then reappeared, but this time with another one in tow. The incident lasted about three to five minutes in total, and they just stood there looking. It was such an eerie feeling. To this day, my mom and I have not forgotten about it. We could see them fairly clearly because they weren't too far away. The creepiest part was that we went to a museum the next day, and they had old Confederate uniforms on display. We came upon one that was labeled as being from Tennessee, I don't remember more details, and it was the exact same color as the ones we saw. Other uniforms had slight variations, but this one was spot on. My mom and I were 100% sure of it. This is a brief tale, but it unfolded in Gettysburg. I attempted to capture a photograph of what I believe was called Sprangler Springs, and astonishingly, my camera failed about four times while trying to take a picture. I had to keep changing batteries. The one picture I managed to capture showed a clear outline of a soldier standing next to it, looking downward. Another peculiar incident occurred when I took a picture of my ex standing under the rocks at Devil's Den. He pulled a funny face, mouth wide open, but the resulting picture made it seem as though his mouth was extended incredibly far down his face. Besides that, some pictures had an exaggerated number of orb-like features in them. Additionally, we stayed at the notably eerie Farnsworth Inn there, and throughout the night, there was a persistent knocking on the wall in the room next to ours, coinciding rhythmically with our position while lying in bed. When we brought this up to the staff in the morning, we learned that the room had been unoccupied that night. Here is my unforgettable encounter at Gettysburg. I have visited three times, but the experience I'm about to describe was undoubtedly the most memorable. Additionally, my family has photographs with mysterious orbs, captured even under the bright sun. Moreover, every time I stepped out of the car at significant battlefield sites, such as Big and Little Round Tops, I was overcome by an extremely eerie sensation, as though I were under surveillance and not in a benign way. Despite the presence of many other visitors, this felt distinctly unsettling. On one occasion, while ascending Little Round Top, I stumbled as if someone had forcefully pushed me from behind. I've heard that the Farnsworth Inn is notoriously active in this regard. I am eager to stay there during my next visit. 
Despite the town's eeriness, I am continually drawn back. My mother expresses a similar sentiment. Participating in a genuine ghost tour and exploring some historic buildings would be fascinating, although the two tours I previously joined were underwhelming and disappointing. I wish I could recall the name of the field off to the side of Devil's Den, the one on your left as you drive past Devil's Den. As we walked there, I was overcome with a horrible feeling that someone was watching me with displeasure. It frightened me, but we continued on, until I was seized by an overwhelming sense of panic because it felt like something unpleasant would occur if I proceeded. Moreover, during my visits there, I participated in a few ghost hunts. On one occasion, this girl and I were seated on a couch in a spine-chilling house where a general or someone significant had passed away. Suddenly, I heard an extremely loud smack noise, following which her voice recorder device fell to the ground. She panicked and dashed out of the house. One of the tour guides attempted to soothe her, and some people, including my ex, doubted her story, but I am certain that something struck her hand. It also unnerved me, especially because I was only a few inches away from her when it happened. This story revolves around a battlefield. A few years ago, there was a local kid in my neighborhood who would dream about a World War II pilot who was shot down somewhere in the Pacific. In his dreams, he was the actual pilot. It was truly bizarre. He knew everything about the man, the ship's name, the pilot's call sign, his closest friends, his sister's names. He could even recall conversations that the pilot had with his comrades. A show, possibly 60 Minutes, did a feature on him and verified all the information the child provided about the pilot, and it matched up perfectly. The child had never read or watched anything about World War II before. The child's father wrote a book about all these intriguing and eerie experiences, 